This time on Distant Shores, we're back on board the boat in Panama. We just got here from Canada. The first time in seven and a half months, we've been able to get down to Panama. And we're gonna take a look around the boat just to see how she looks after all this time stored. We're also gonna go back and take a look at a segment we filmed a few weeks ago in Canada about docking. So we'll show you that and uh, give some hints for getting the boat in and out of a dock. Stay tuned for a special feature at the end of this video to learn more about COVID-19 procedures for international travelers as we experience during our return trip to Panama. Okay, we got a bit of a lull between these blows. It's uh, just blowing 15 or 20 right now, but the forecast and the storms we've been getting in the middle is something like 25 to 30. And this is a pretty protected marina from all these directions. We can, uh, around here, up to the north, direction of Panama City, and then across to the nearby island, and then there's the entrance to the harbor. So the problem is the wind is coming from here. Waves are coming in uh, right into the harbor here, so. Tropical storm Eta is north of us, causing winds from the south-southwest, which drives waves across mostly open ocean towards the entrance to our marina. With tropical storm Eta nearby, the winds are going to be gusting up to 30 or so, 30, 35 knots. Nothing like they're getting up in the storm, but here in this marina, the seas are coming right in. So our challenge today is to try to take a look at the spring lines and the dock lines to make sure they're not chafing through with these big winds and blows. The boat is moored with a bow line and stern line, so she is kept near the dock, but can still move with wind and surge. The purpose of spring lines is to stop the boat moving forward and backward. Right now, we can just take a look and inspect what's happened, and I'll show you how it's set up. So this is um, basically three stern lines, and then this one across, so make a fourth. And then we have two spring lines. So these are the springs here. So as the boat is blown in by the wind coming down along the stern, this is really <coughs> mostly what's holding it, her from drifting up onto the dock. And then the other spring lines we have here are doing the same thing. So these four spring lines, and you can see they're all taking a lot of pull. We had only planned to leave the boat for a week in March, but after seven months of being tied to the dock, a few of the dock lines had chafed through. Marina staff replaced them with these sturdy white lines. I add an extra spring for this gale. This one is called an after bow spring, since it runs aft from the bow and is a spring line. An after bow spring will help control the boat from surging forward with the wind pushing us towards the dock. Up at the bow, we've got three bow lines on this corner of the boat. The surge comes in from over there across toward where we are here and then it bounces the boat this way and then she bounces back again like that and gives quite a tug on the bow cleat. And then the other line is our really the only line holding us from this direction where the surge is coming in because of course with this slip here we can't have a line across. So that's we've got these two bow lines like this that are holding the bow, bow of the boat away uh, from being blown onto the dock. We've done our best to set her up for the night. We have another day and a half of this as the storm uh, effects of the storm are moving a little bit further north and we should still have 30 knots. 30, supposed to be 25 to 30, maybe a little more than 30 uh, for the next day and a half. To refresh your memory or inspire you if you are new to boating, we have been filming a video series about docking techniques. Comment below if this is something you'd like to see more of. We shot this one in Toronto just before we left home, showing how to use a spring line to control your boat when leaving a dock in windy conditions. Welcome to Distant Chores. I'm Paul Shard. Today we're down in Toronto on a friend's boat. We're going to do some more docking practice. Got a breeze today of 10 to 15 knots and breezy days are the most challenging for dockage as you got to get things sorted out, get the lines on. Let's take a look at some hints for docking on a breezy day. With wind pushing us out of the dock, we might need help turning in a narrow channel. So Cheryl has run a midship spring line to a cleat on the end of the dock. Then she can hold the boat so it pivots around that point. When our turn is mostly complete, she brings it back aboard. 
Now we'll demonstrate. Basically, we'd like to make a turn now, but maybe if the wind is blowing a bit hard, we might be worried about completing the turn before we're blown across the aisle onto the other boats. So Cheryl can control the after spring line, and I've got the engine in forward, just gently, the boat spins around that point. Okay, now bring the line back aboard, Cher. Great. Now this boat has a single rudder and a two-bladed propeller, which might be a bit slow to pull in reverse. So we'll test it before attempting to reverse into the slip for the first time. The wind is blowing across the channel, so I'm staying upwind as we come in fairly slowly towards the slip. In a crosswind, you'll find the bow will blow off on most boats, so backing into the slip shouldn't be too difficult. We'll turn the bow downwind and back in. Okay, in this case, the prop walk in reverse is pulling the stern around to this side but we can correct it with a quick burst of forward throttle. With the wheel hard over to port, we can realign the stern a bit. The boat won't go forward, just turn a bit. Then we can come on into the slip and grab the lines. After seven and a half months at home, Panama finally opened its borders to international travelers on October 12th. We quickly finished up editing projects in our studio and on October 30th arrived at Toronto Pearson International Airport to catch a Copa airline flight direct to Panama City. We'd never seen the airport so quiet. COVID-19 requirements were that masks must be worn at all times and that each person had to carry their own sanitizer. There were even vending machines at the airport offering COVID protection kits for sale. Another feature was this optional sanitization corridor where you walked through and got misted with hypochlorous, an all-natural saltwater solution that was claimed to be safe for humans, non-toxic, non-irritating and eco-friendly. There were air monitoring stations throughout the airport that we'd never seen before, and UV lights had been added to sanitize handrails on conveyor belts. Of course, social distancing was respected everywhere. For our own peace of mind, we opted to fly business class, so we were spaced further apart from other passengers. Masks had to be worn throughout the five and a half hour flight. We were given a boxed lunch and bottles of water for safety reasons, quite okay. When we approached Panama City, we flew right over the entrance to the Panama Canal and the marina where Distant Shores 3 was docked at Ilaneos, one of the off-lying islands, a good omen. Since it wasn't possible to get results of a COVID-19 test within 48 hours of arriving in Panama, Tokuman Airport offered rapid tests at a test centre right before customs. So we have to do the COVID test now. When you arrive, you get to do the test here. Okay, it's $50. $50 I think. US $50 US per person. And that's because at home in Canada, they couldn't give you the test results in less than 48 hours. So we get to do the test and then we get a result in half an hour or so. Yes, yeah. There were two of you? Or yes, two? those. Okay. How did I do? Did I pass? Yes. Yes, you're king. I'm passed. Thank you. Thank you. We'll check out. Yeah. So my test took a little longer than Paul's, so I'm kind of worried about it. Hope it's just a delay. Probably a shift change in the COVID center. <laughs> they do a couple hundred tests a day here, apparently. Yes, thank you. Cheryl Shar. Yes. Cheryl, Melissa, Love. Yes. All good? Yes. No. Ah, uh, fantastic. Great. Muchas gracias. Hey, you can start now. Yay. I'm clean. 
you can take your mask off, honey. Uh, you made it to the boat. Yes, and she's still floating and she looks beautiful. So good to be back. We'll just see what it looks like inside. <laughs> okay, well, let's get these bags on board and see what the boat looks like inside. Seven months. Oh, goodness. so excited to be back. Well, let's try to find the keys for the boat. I got them. All right. How does it look, babe? Well, let's see. So far, I don't see anything. It's a big disaster. Well, it smells like it's been here for a long time, though. Everything looks okay. The batteries are 100%. So the charging's all worked. Let's open some hatches up. Oh, wow, it's perfect. The leather looks good. I was afraid it was all good. No, the leather looks like we left it yesterday. Oh, my gosh, that's so great. Hello, no raccoons. Hey, you guys, where are you? Oh, oh my goodness. We made it. Oh, my we God. Made it. <laughs> For <laughs> frick's sake. What a frickin' oh year it's been. Oh, my gosh. Seven months, and look how uh, great the boat looks. I was just so afraid it was going to be, like, covered in mildew. and. Yeah, there's not a sign of it. It doesn't smell like mildew. It's just hot. Yeah. No, it smells fine, and it looks good. <sighs> no raccoons broken. Oh, no, that's what I was really worried about. Yet. I thought there'd be raccoons wandering all over here. Yeah. No, climbing it's around. All clean and nice. There's some little dust just bits of dust that's blown in wow yeah. amazing hey this is great thank goodness <laughs> oh goodness thank goodness we are home throw a comment below if you found this video helpful and would like to see more like it thanks for watching and a special thank you to all of our distant shores cruising club members on patreon for their support making these videos if you're just getting into sailing or planning an upcoming cruise, we invite you to join the club too. Participate in informative member-only live chats and Q&As, attend meetups and other special events, plus get early access to Distant Shores videos. We look forward to welcoming you aboard. <laughs>